Good morning, I'm here with a little smart doll treat today. Some of you will have seen the little ape that I made the other day and I did make a suggestion at the time that I might turn it into a hat for a doll and a couple of people said they'd be interested so I thought well why not. So I've got a Gaia here modelling her little hat. I think we'll call it a little monkey hat. Just can't really differentiate what he is. He is quite cute though, very simple to make. So I'm going to pop him down there. She's giving her little ape a cuddle there because she's I think they seem to suit to those colours as well so I'm going to pop her slightly to one side and tell you what we've got in fact I'll take the hat off the first let's acquire your hat we've got a bit of, bit of hat hair there now missus over you go for now so here is the little hat it's in an amigurumi style and let's have a look what we need we have a double knit yarn in a orangey brown I would say it is any colour you want. I mean, you could even go for a pastel colour or some every a rainbow colour. Anything I think works for this design. I think the cream for the muzzle, especially if you've got a dark colour here, stands out nicely. But you could use a white, perhaps. But whatever you want to use for that. Obviously, I have my scissors. I have a three millimetre crochet hook. I know I do have a tendency to use a lot of uh, three point five for amigurumi, but usually if I'm making it for a doll, I'll usually go for a slightly smaller one. I have some sewing cotton to sew on the eyes and uh, these are the little beads that I've got for that but you can just sew your details on or use a little bit of felt whether you want stitch or glue. Now these aren't bits of rubbish, these are the little bits I've already pre-cut for his tufts that are there. I have my needles and a little bit of crochet cotton to do his mouth detail because I find it better than embroidery cotton. You can use embroidery cotton but embroidery cotton has a tendency to sort of split whereas this doesn't so that is why I prefer that. So we'll pop the bits and bobs to one side, try not to knock the camera because you know what I'm like. Um, I have a little tin here because I'd already pre-rolled the yarn up and it'll roll everywhere so I'm going to pop it in my tin. I'm hoping that's not going to make a noise in fact because I have some bits and bobs in here. There's some eyes. I'm to take them out because they're going to rattle every time the yarn runs so I've got my yarn in my tin I'll pop my little hat there I have a drink next to me ready and let's get going slip knot onto the hook not too tight need to be able to move it we have two chain again it's just like most of the amigurumi I do into that first chain we're gonna do six Double crochets, remember UK turns. That's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Tighten it up a little bit, we'll tighten it up further later. And this, this time, it's going to be two into each of those six. So, into the first one. If you're not sure where the first one is, I'll take that back out. Always count from the back. So, we've got one, two, three four, five and six because this can mislead you a little bit sometimes and you think it is a stitch and it's not. So to tighten it again, two in each, two double crochets in each double crochet. So that's one set of two, two set of two, three set of two, four, five and our last set of two and six tighten it up so we now have 12 stitches so you're going to repeat that again the two in each it is very similar to what we've done previously you could put a stitch marker in if you wanted to I haven't actually got one with me but I'll show you what I do sometimes when I can't find one but I don't need it just yet because I can count 12 quite comfortably without getting too distracted so that's one set of two Two sets of two, remember two into each double crochet. That's our third, our fourth, number five, six. So we're halfway there, seven, eight, nine. 10, we'll just do more, 11 and number 12. So now because we've done two in each of the 12, we have 24 stitches. Well, we have if I get that last one in. There we go. So we now have 24 stitches. Now, I've forgotten to put my stitch marker out. So this is what I commonly do if I'm doing smaller things. I just use a bit of contrasting yarn, 
push it through and pull it back through so it's there you do have to watch it because it can have a tendency to fall out if you don't pay attention to it there's different ways of pushing the yarn through but i just do that for speed right we need another increase round and we're going to be doing two in one stitch and then one in each of the next two and you do that eight times so we'll show you number one set so we go two in our first one and then one in each of the next two so just straight double crochets so that is a set i have my stitch marker so i'm not going to over worry about the counting if you're nice and quiet it's best to do that to make sure you've got an exact number but it's not the end of the world i'm going to just use the stitch marker so i have a two in one stitch i have a one in the next two stitches that's actually our second set isn't it so i have a two i have a one I have a one so that's our third set we have a two i have a one and a one that was number four wasn't it so i have a two and a one and a one and you're going to just keep doing that until you get round so a two a one oh and a one I've lost count now because I wasn't I was thinking about what I'm doing next right here we go so we've got a two I think I can see what we've got though in there we need one more set because look I'm almost at the stitch marker so that means I must have another one if you sit in this side of the stitch marker you definitely need another one if you're that side you've gone too far so here we go so we have two in this one we have a one oh and a one and hopefully that lands on top of my stitch marker on my piece of yarn which it does beautifully we have another increase round again just having a little look at my measurements there so we're going to be doing instead of a, a two and a two we're going to be doing two in one then one two and three okay so you're going to do two in the first one and then you're going to do a one a one and a one so that is the combination that is our first set so it's a two in the first one and then a one a one and a one so that's the second one so we're going to carry on that all the way around so we have a two and then a one one um oh um one it's determined to miss my stitches this morning so we have a two and then we have a one, a one, and a one. We've got a couple more to go. Don't worry if it starts to go a bit sort of, I don't know, sort of twisted, because that will straighten out. I'm going to tighten that as well because it's annoying me. So here we go. We have a two. We have a one, one, and one. We're almost there. I think maybe a couple more. So we have a two a one 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 two in the same stitch and then a one one and a one now we don't seem to be round do we so i clearly do need another one because i'm nowhere near that if i was near it i'd go mm, maybe i've done it but we need two more well two, one more set so two in that one and then one two and three that's better look so we're now above it you will find your stitch marker position does change if as you're increasing so you do have to watch that so i'm not going to over worry because i've just got one double crochet round now so just a double crochet round all the way and then i'm changing stitches and you can see where the start and stop is a little bit more then so so that's just one double crochet into every single one of those and it should be 40 stitches i hope it's 40 stitches i do want to do one of these for the smaller dolls um and i will do the tutorial but i'm waiting for some four ply yarn of a similar color at the moment so until it comes through um i can't do it i think it would look rather cute on a cindy it's odd though because if I make a Cindy size um, I can't really say it's for Barbie because Cindy has a rather large head uh, comparatively 
but I do mainly make for Cindy's rather than Barbie's. Almost round. Now, obviously, double crochets take a little bit longer, so it feels like you're taking forever. Let's have a look at the time. We're actually only on 10 minutes. That's not too bad at all. We're going to change the stitch to half trebles in a second. Now, traditionally, they're not done in a spiral form, but I'm going to do them in a spiral form because I do not like the line that you get when you slip stitch join. I think it looks very messy. You can't really do it much above a half treble, but you can just get away with it with a half treble. So that was our DC round. We have our 40 stitches. We are now going to have half treble rounds. And I've marked down, I've done seven. So we've got seven half treble rounds. So if you're wanting to stop now or pause me and just get on with your rounds, by all means, and I'll see you at the other end. Uh, if not, like I say, mark it down on a piece of paper. I've got my pen. I always have my pen and paper next to me, so I'll mark down each round as well. And I'm going to move this piece of yarn first. It is more obvious where your stop start is, even though we're going to do it spiral. But it doesn't hurt to have a marker in there. So if, can't, if you're not sure, if you've mainly done the amigurumi with me and you've not done a half treble, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm actually going to slip stitch into the first stitch because I want it flat to start. I'm going to do two chain. Then I'm going to do one half treble in every single half treble. Oh, I should have done that a little bit slower. I'll show you again. Yarn round, in. So it starts like a treble. You pull it through. But we're going to pull through all three then. Yeah. So yarn round, in. Pull through all three. And you're going to keep doing that all the way around. Now, as I say, we're doing seven rounds. If you're not sure what I mean by the spiral system, it might be worth just staying with me until I get to the end of this one and then carrying on with your six at your own speed. Now, I know this might look a little bit quick for you, but you can slow it down in the settings if necessary, but it's all the same stitch. So if you sort of just follow what I said sort of the very beginning bit, it's just going to be the same all the way around anyway. So you wrap your yarn, you pull it through, you pull it through all three. So it starts like a treble, really. It's a slightly longer stitch, so it makes our work a little bit faster. Now, if we were doing double crochet rounds here, I'd have to be telling you you were doing about 14 rounds. Um, and obviously, sort of for time and things like that, particularly for the videos, I like to sort of keep it a little bit quicker, if at all possible. Not always possible, depending on what I'm making or what yarn I'm using. But I thought I'd make this a relatively quick make. Round we go, almost at our first round. So don't forget that pen and paper because that's what I'm going to do any second now. But I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with this join because you know I said I'd do it spiral rather than joining. So that's my last stitch, okay? Now, if we were doing it sort of old school, we would then slip stitch into the top of that first two chain. We're not going to do that. It looks a little bit odd to start with, but it will balance, I promise you. So we're going to yarn round and still into the top of that, but just do it as a half treble and carry on round again. So we just half treble now. Now, I think that join, it looks a bit weird, and that's why you've got to sort of remember where you started, but it will look ultimately a lot neater than stopping and starting. So again, it's just the same stitch. I didn't write down my first one. I said I was going to, didn't I? There we are, I've marked that down. So that was the first of seven. We're on the second of seven now. So you can see it goes a lot faster than if we were doing it in double crochets. I like double crochets and a lot of them, if I'm doing them, that is what I will do it in. But as I say, for the tutorials, so you can do it half trebles if you want. It's just that it will take you a lot more and I would sort of probably do about 12 and then measure on the doll. And if you're not happy it's long enough, just obviously add a couple in there so it's already starting to curve round which is good again watch your tension you may want to check on the doll sort of at this point in fact when I've done this round I will check on um, I nearly said Mirai then, check on Gaia just to sort of see how it's going to be fitting to make sure that, uh, you know, I, I am doing it right. There's been times I've picked the wrong hook up and carried on doing something. And it's weird. I find some days my work's 
tighter than others i don't know why and depends what yarn i'm using as well so we'll have a little look in a second almost round and i must mark it off so i know where i'm going more stitches to go so remember these are half trebles and also remember they are UK terms right now that is back to where it was so I'm gonna mark off that's my second round now it looks a bit weird here you're like oh where is it so sometimes you just have to pull that stitch out it's there that is where we're wanting to go so let's have a look, see whether that works. It better work. Pull it tight. There you go. So it's quite a neat edge. That's why I've done that. So you can see we're starting to curve round. So let's grab Gaia. Just have a little quick look. Come here, Mrs. I'm hoping her eyes don't drop out. I know that sounds a bit weird, but I took her out the other day and I don't think the blue tack is holding. Well, it's, it's a type of blue tack, isn't it? That goes around it and it's not holding. And I put her down and her eyes just dropped out. It looked very weird. So basically, it needs to look like a little sort of skull cap at this point. And if that fits okay, sort of edge to edge there, you're quite confident that you can just carry on with the same stitches going down. I just thought of something else. I said do it in double crochet if you want. You will have to do another increase round first if you're going to do double crochets because the half treble is a longer stitch but it gives more stretch so it makes it bigger. Normally when I'm doing this center point I'm going up to about 48 double crochets but because I knew I was going on to half trebles I only needed 40. It does make a difference. So off we go. Like I say whether you've either skipped forward or you're still with me. If you're still with me hello. And let's get on. So it's going to grow quite quickly, this. These are still half trebles, but we're doing half trebles in a spiral format. So you just have to be very careful when you get back to that beginning bit and making sure you've not missed any stitches and that you're going into the right one. It's relatively obvious. Well, perhaps it's obvious when you're used to doing it. I don't know. But that's why we'll leave the stitch marker in and then it gives you an approximate idea of where we got to go. Pull the yarn out a little bit. Now I know Guy is going to be keeping the first monkey hat. I'm not quite sure what to do with the second one. I might just take it to Dollycon and see if anyone's interested in getting one. Because as much as yes, these are all smart doll objects, they do fit other dolls, of course, with the same sort of head sizing. Um, I know my smart doll stuff fits my polyps, for example. Um, I'm not sure for Blythe. I think it's not far off. But if depending on what dolls you've got, I know most people are going to be looking on the video because they see the word smart doll. So it's probably going to be mainly smart doll owners. But there again, a lot of you guys um, do have other dolls. Some are specifically just smart doll collectors. But I know there's a lot out there like myself that collect a variety. So it might fit one of your others as well. Yep, you see, so I'm using that as my guide. Ah, that was number three. We're nearly halfway there. Make sure you pull this next bit tight because it looks a bit loose, doesn't it, like that? So make sure that's a, a tight stitch where you join. Off we go. So round number four of half trebles. There isn't a huge amount more to do. I've actually already done um, a couple of the ears because these ears here, they're doubled. So it's two layers because I think that's a little bit solider. It's like when I did my Mickey Mouse hat, I did a double layer because just the one, it just didn't hold. You don't have to. These are quite small. You could probably get away with just doing one layer. But I just thought it gave it a little bit more weight to the object. That's all. I'm planning on doing, because um, I've been a bit late with this video. It should have been done earlier in the week, but... Um, things happen and you don't always get things done but uh, I'm going to be showing you some uh, smart doll clothes next I think I'm going to do that one I've got some gorgeous clothes from uh, Bella's doll clothes which I know some of you have bought some of her items as well now since she's moved into the smart doll stuff it is absolutely beautifully made so I will show you I've got to get uh, she ready for the fashion show though 
but I'm aiming to do it after this one as long as all my filming goes okay that is what I want to do next almost there for our round number four which means we're over halfway you can see it's now properly shaping into a little hat Oh, not caught that stick. There we go. So that was number four. Three more rounds. Can you see the shape coming? And also the beauty of these half trebles is they've got a little bit more stretch, a little bit more give than a, than a double crochet. So it's a great way of getting a bit of shaping in there. So off we go for our round number five. I know I say it on a lot of my videos at the moment, but we all know what the uh, situation is in the world. But I hope you're keeping safe. I know different countries are at different levels and all making different decisions. We are still in lockdown here in the UK. Uh, apparently there's going to be some decisions made today. I'm not quite sure what. Because um, I know our bank holiday got moved about. But I've never known that happened before, but because it was VE Day on uh, Friday... It sort of uh, became a bank holiday rather than the Monday, the May Day holiday. So that was a little bit weird. So it's sort of thrown everything out. But apparently the government is going to be making some announcements today regarding if there's going to be any sort of uh, release on some things for the lockdown. Just thought I'd heard my phone then. It isn't. I've got um, a second phone up here that my granddaughter plays on games. Not that she's obviously around to use it at the moment. Um, but uh, I have kept it charged and it's just made a noise. So I'm surprised this one doesn't because when that one makes a noise, it's usually saying that there's a message and then this one does exactly the same. It's just my previous phone I kept. I just, uh, obviously, it's connected to the internet in the house so she can play on the games. But And it's handy if we go out so she doesn't use my phone. We're almost there. I do get distracted very easy, don't I? One minute I'm asking if you're all safe and next minute I'm talking about my phone. Right, that is number five. We just have two more rounds and you can see it's coming on nicely there. So off we go again. This is round number six. So I was saying, I, hope, I really do hope you're all keeping safe out there. It's not a particularly nice time. Our statistics do seem to be balancing off a little bit. That's the problem though, it's statistics, it's people's lives, not statistics. Right, I'm going to stop being morbid again. We're going to be happy. And we're going to enjoy our crochet, which I know is a great stress reliever for a lot of people. I don't know if you like me when you're crocheting, but I do incline to go into my own little world. So it's a, a bit of a distraction. Now, so I know some of you will have moved on to the end of that seventh row. Some of you are still with me. Almost at the end of number six. After we've done um, number seven, oh, I keep dropping the stitches. Um, there is, well, I've got written down there's only one more round and that will be a double crochet round. But I would like you to sort of try it on your doll at that point. Make sure it's at the length you want in because if it's a little bit short, you can either add on an extra half treble round or you can just add on a couple more double crochet rounds. I think double crochet finishes it, makes it a little bit neater along the edges rather than just doing half trebles. So we're round again. We need just one more. That's looking about right. Off we go. This is our last half treble round. Then I'm going to try it on Gaia just to show you. I mean, the same size as the other one, so it should be fitting her. But I just want to sort of show you sort of how to keep an eye on the fit when you're doing it. I know there's a few of you out there that on the smart doll groups, etc., that have been doing the hats, and uh, I've seen some bags as well recently. Um, so it's really nice. If you do make one, please tag me. Um, I love to see what people have done. I like to know that, you know, it was okay and it worked. It's always a bit scary making something for somebody because you never know whether they're going to really like it or not. 
everyone's been really lovely up to me to me so far so fingers crossed i'm doing the right thing nearly there should have moved the stitch marker up a bit it's usually a good idea to move it up it's not going to alter a sort of position because we're not increasing or decreasing but it's just a little bit harder to sort of guess where you are a couple more uh, and i say like i say it's harder to sort of line up imagine where it is now i'd say just one more there we go and let's have a look how it fits on our Miss Gaia. Come here, Missus. She's still hugging the monkey there. Or the ape, as I keep getting told off for. Not saying monkey. Right, let's have a look. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Now, I'm going to do one round of double crochet, which to me is enough for this. If you feel it's a little bit short at this point, depending on your tension, you may want to add another half treble round in or maybe just a couple of extra double crochet rounds. Obviously, I've got this little guy here to compare with as well. So I know it's about right because I can compare with that as well. Last round, last round. And that means you've actually done the body of the hat. And then we've only got some little ears. And believe you me, they are really quick to make. And his little nose area. And we go. Apologies if I'm going a little bit fast here, but basically you can just pause me. It's just one double crochet into every single one of those half trebles. That is all it is. There is no pattern involved. It is just the same stitch in every stitch until you get back round to your stitch marker. We're nearly there. We're over halfway anyway. Just looking out the window it's really dull today we had absolute gorgeous weather yesterday sun was absolutely blaring down uh, it rained overnight and looking out there now it looks like it's planning on raining again it's just all dark and gray again i can hear the birds singing though which is quite nice I keep dropping the stitches now tash concentrate on what i'm doing not on something else Or not. Oh, that one's caught. There we go. If your stitches catch, pull it out and start again. It's not worth ripping the yarn. Right, I'm saying I've done. I'm going to do a slip stitch in the last one. You don't have to do it, it's just my preference because I think it makes it flatter at the back. And there we go. That is the main part. You could just make that as a little beanie. You don't have to add anything else on. Depend, you could turn turn into other characters you don't even have to just do the monkey right now as i said i've used two of each for the ears and i'm going to stitch round and make it quite solid before i stitch it onto the hat so i've got a three i'm going to show you the fourth uh, as the pattern and then it will be structuring them together we'll do the nose before we do that though so same as before two chain six double crochet into that first chain so we have one two three four five and six one round done second round to come and it's the last round all we're going to do is two double crochets into each one double crochet so here we go so that's two in our first one two in our second, two in our third, in our fourth, fifth, and the last stitch. And like I did with the hat, I then going to do one stitch that's a slip stitch just to join it together. I'm done. That's it. You just need four of those, or 
guess that is pretty solid. I suppose you don't have to do the four. I think that looks okay as well. So it's up to you. You can just do two if you want. That's enough. Would help. So that's our ears. So ears are done. That was simple enough. We're now going to move on to the little muzzle, little nose. I'm not quite sure what to call that area. So I've just got this little bit that I've taken off another ball that I've got. And again, it's going to start exactly the same as everything else. If you can get those first two rounds, you can do amigurumi, basically. It's going to annoy me that because it's going to run about. One, two. And then six double crochets into that centre. That's two, three, four, five and six. Pull it tight. Two double crochets into each of the six. So this, this part is the same as the ear. So we have one. Two, three, four, five, and six. And pull it tight. Now we just need one more bit of increasing. That's determined to just roll about until I'll just leave it there. Again, two in each. Got one. That's two. That's our second one for two. Our third one for two. I'm sure some colours are harder to see. Fourth. Fives. Fives. Fifth even. <laughs> Six. I'm making up my own numbers. Seventh. Eighth, number nine, number ten, eleven, and just one more. So that was two double crochets into each double crochet. We now have 24 stitches. We need one more round, which is just one double crochet into each one. Just one into each one. So we've got 24 stitches, so I'm just going to count 24. I don't need a stitch marker for that, do I? So that's two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We're halfway around. Pull that tight. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Oops, it's split. Take it out if it's split. So that's 14. This is 15. 16. 17. 19. 20. We've just got four more. 21. 22. 23. And 24. And our next one, slip stitch. Snip it off. Um, fasten it off. Oh, I can hear the dog rumbling. I don't know whether you can. I can hear some doors banging outside, so I think it might be the neighbours or it's a delivery or something for somebody. So that is the muzzle. Now, again, you'll be looking, that is more oval. That comes down to how you stitch it on. And you can see it sort of sticks out again, but that again comes down to the stitching. You can leave it flat if you want, but if you stitch it just right, it just sort of Pluffs it up a little bit. So that's all the crochet done. So we can move that tin out of the way completely. I'm just going to have a quick drink. Bear with me. I've got some peppermint tea here. And let's have a look at putting this little guy together. Now, you do need to sew these two ends in. I'm not going to do that for you guys now because you know how to do that, I'm sure. And let's have a look how I put this muzzle on. So I need... The right needle, that one will do me. I've got so many stuck on there at the moment. Now, this first one, I know sometimes I do use it to anchor. In this particular situation, it's not going through anything, so I don't think there's much point. So I'm just going to thread it through to make sure it's not going to come undone. Just like that, and get rid of it. 
we don't need that but we do need this bit this is to actually sew it into place you can actually pop it on your doll at this point and sort of measure where you'd want the nose or you can just go for it now remember that where you finished off is the back so i'm just folding it so that is the back so i'm quite happy with this being the nose area i think about there i'm going to start at the bottom with my stitching the first couple is a bit of a pain to get into position and what I'm doing, I've mentioned before, you know how you've got your two here, one, two. I'm only picking up the top one. So I don't know whether you can see that properly. So one, two, only the top one. I'm going to pick it up and then pick up a strand from underneath. Now, as you can see, I stitch sort of very, just slightly underneath it. Rather than just on the edge, it's just slightly underneath and that's what makes it puff up. So I'm picking up the top stitch slightly underneath sometimes it's hard to get the right bit I will do the top one slightly underneath and also if you want it to be a little bit more oval when you get to these sides sort of stretch it out a little bit top stitch and pick it up and there's quite a few stitches obviously to go around here So I'm going to sort of, can you see I'm going to sort of push it a little bit like that now as well, ready for when I sew the top bit. Keep going, there we are. And so you can sew it flat if you don't want, you don't have to do it so it lumps up. I don't know whether perhaps you'd do it a little bit smaller if you're going to do that though. I have to be really careful when I'm stitching because I want to pull it towards my body. And obviously you guys can't see. So I'm just going to open the hat up now so it's on my hands so I can work with it. So I'm going to push it down slightly because we're coming towards that top area. Did I pick that one up? I did. And pick it in. Oh, my one caught a little bit. I hope that's going to be all right. Otherwise I will take... No, it's okay. It's okay. Sometimes I'd rather take the stitches out than continue. It's got to sit nicely. Doing the actual stitching can change completely the shape of your work. You can sometimes do the most beautiful crochet and then if you don't stitch it up right, it completely spoils it. Can you see how it's starting to stick out now? Just because I'm sort of pushing it very gently. I'm not forcing it. It sort of does it itself if you do it this way, taking the top stitch and then slightly underneath it. So top stitch. Slightly underneath, top stitch, and slightly underneath. That's looking okay. Quite pleased with that. Be amazed how many times I actually undo my stitching. Don't presume, um, because I've been doing it a long time, that every time I do it, I just oh, I'll just stitch there and do it. Lots of things I undo. Lots of things go wrong, but I learn from it and I come back from it and make something better sometimes i can make an error and it will actually make a better product <laughs> so don't always look at your mistakes as a bad thing sometimes they can be quite good right we're on the last stitch here so i'm going to just turn this one into a little knot then i'm going to push it through the muzzle area don't pull it too tight because it'll pull that bit in and I'm going to push it through again. And there we have. We have our little muzzle. And I have a very magnetic pair of scissors. Snip. Right, let's have a look what we've got in here. I think I've already threaded them up, if I remember rightly. I have. We don't need that bit. So I've already got this threaded up. Now this is his little mouth. You can do whatever shape mouth you wish I'm going to do him a little smiley face I quite like just the straight across sort of monkey sort of face there I am going in from the inside to roughly now can you see I don't go between I go I split a stitch and then it holds for your knot otherwise it doesn't necessarily hold and then decide I think about there ah oh, looks about right again easy to undo if you've done it wrong 
it's got a slightly wider mouth than the other one. I don't know. Do we prefer the small? The I think I prefer the littler mouth. I think now, as I say, this is when you go wrong. Sometimes it's not the end of the world. You just undo it and pull it out and start again. It only takes a second or two to do it. It's better that than not to be happy with what you've done. So I think he needs to be a bit smaller mouth. So I'm going to take him in. Where should we take him in? About there. That should be okay. I don't think that's the same size. So I'm going to roughly about there. I think that should be good. Let's have a look. Yeah, that'll do me. It's still slightly bigger, but that's okay. This is why you should sew your ends in first because they get in the way. So just turning it slightly inside out. We need to tie a little knot because we need to make sure his eyes going nowhere. I'm going to tie another one because sometimes crochet cotton can come undone. You do end up with little knots this side, but it's not the end of the world. So I'm just going to thread it through. There's not a huge amount you can do about that. And we're going to snip it off so I can move that needle out of the way. So we have a little mouth. We need the eyes. I've already threaded this up to make it easier. Again, I think the eyes need to be quite close. So I'm going to pop it through about there. Again, make sure your knot's big enough. Make sure you don't sort of go through the gaps, go through the split of a stitch. And here we go. I'm going to go through this again because I want to make sure it's secure. Obviously, this is not a play thing. It's for your dolls, uh, for display reasons or photographic reasons. So it's not... Uh, going to be going to a small child so you don't need to worry too much about the beads if it is going to a younger child if you're making one for their dolls if they've got one of a similar head size I've just threaded my yarn through and I've actually gone through so you won't see it on the other side I've literally gone through the stitches and our second one but yeah I'd have a tendency to either embroider it on or a little felt stitched on eyes if it is going to be for a younger person Make sure it doesn't twist because if it twists it can make it stick out too far and through through all the way through the back make sure they're solid enough I think that's quite cute again eye position totally optional I'm gonna make a tiny knot here and then I'm going to push it through um, so it's actually behind the muzzle, so you won't show on the other side either. These scissors are really magnetic. They've been sat next to uh, the magnetic uh, needle holders, needle minders, and it's made my scissors magnetic as well. So we have our little face. Let's tuck those bits in. I really should sew them in first. Now the ears. Let's have a look. I'm just going to do one for you. Now these two I've already sewn in the middle section. Now one of these strands which is going to need to be the longest one is going to stitch them together you can crochet them together if you wanted to um, i found that made it a little bit lumpier when i tried it i think i preferred this stitch together version but again you don't have to do a double one anyway so let's start from there so they're both at the same position and you can see where the stitches are so it's just a case of Whip stitching them together all the way around, and obviously, you need to do this with both of them. <laughs> Nearly there, and then when we get to the end with this one, we can actually make a knot and get rid of this strand, and we'll just use the other one to sew his ear in place. make a little knot so it's going nowhere then thread it all the way through to get rid of it oh and no drop it and snip it off so we have a little ear now the ear is approximately well as you can see on this one it is as you flatten it it's literally there and there so I'm just going to sew the one on and then I just need to show you the tufts and then I will finish the rest off afterwards because it's only the same, so you don't need to see on both sides. So about there, that looks about right. 
Now I'm going to just push the yarn to the back of the ear because I'm going to sew it. So I've folded it over. I'm going to sew it at the back, not at the front, because I don't want it obvious where we've stitched it on. You want it to sort of blend. I'm just doing three stitches and a knot. Then fasten the yarn, well, thread the yarn, should I say, through the ear again. It shouldn't go anywhere from there. A snip. And there we have a little ear. The last bit we've got is on the top. Now, if you've already done the little eight that I did, you know what this is. I'm going to use a larger needle because it's, I need a bigger hole for this because I'm going to double it over, thread it through, just like that, not all the way through. Now, this doesn't sit, let me show you this way. Can you see it doesn't sit right at the top because you'll find when you put the hats on the doll, detail need to be slightly forward. Try it, you'll see the difference. If you put it there, it will sort of stick out sort of further back on the head because of the shape of the doll's heads. So I usually find the detail needs to be slightly, oh look, I've not undone one of them, that should be fringed, should be slightly forward. So the way I usually do that is, so if you look at this one, if I fold it like that way, you can see how you get this bit at the bottom. So I'm gonna do the same again. So I know, or you can pop it on your doll and do it, I know this is where I want my tufts. So I'm just going to thread it through, let it go, and pull it through. I'll just do the one to show you. I then trim it to the length required. And then, as I've just mentioned, I've missed one of those. What you do with these, you can either untwist it, depending on your yarn, and take a needle and just separate it up. Yep. Twist the yarn, take a needle, separate it up. Some yarns are easier than others. And it gives him sort of that sort of curly sort of look. He could just have one tuft. It looks sort of quite amusing with one tuft. But I have done three in that one. So you would continue to do the three. So that is it. That is our little hat. Let's have a look at the time. Oh, you know, we've done that in about 40 minutes. Not completed it, of course, because I've got another ear to sew on and two tufts. But they take minutes. So that's not a big deal. So I reckon, say an hour to be comfortable a little bit more if you're not used to doing this style but otherwise I don't think it's going to take long and I think it's a rather cute little addition to your smart doll family so let's pop this back on it's a bit of a fun one I know I do serious hats sometimes as well and she can have chic hats but sometimes it's nice to have a bit of fun so I think we need some photos in the garden if it was a little bit sunnier that's the only problem I've got now <laughs> I'm going to have to try and take a photo outside. So I'm quite pleased with that. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe and share if you're not already one of my followers. And um, Thank you very much for watching and see you very soon. Keep safe and I'll be back in a moment or two. Bye.